I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate Have to play the game, have to make a name All our insecurities are on this display This is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Living in a time where disease is on every screen Hello and welcome oh, listeners to another episode of Tactical Awareness It's season one, episode 37 we're winding the season down. ITS 14 has come to a close. We're waiting on 15 and it's Mailbag Madness Part 2. Interplanetary is done. We've got questions to answer. So let's dive in, catch up with my fellow hosts, Owen and Dan, and see what is happening. I mean, this this whole section of tactical awareness is going to be the loose horse shit section, I think, for a bit. <laughs> right? Like, it's just going to be us. Let's, yeah, there's no let's one live in the dream. Break, break the ties. Yeah, <laughs> we'll come in and break the ties later. We'll have we'll have break the ties afterwards when we you and you I disagree on stuff. I don't know. We got some interesting ones this time. I, I did a brief skim, and like um, decided to like there look ahead a little bit. Yeah, some of these are, are, are actually very so interesting. You read them off in a different order last time. Is it? Does it start with class? Yeah, OMC, I went top down. Nichols, yeah. Nim. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, went top I don't down. know if I opened like a uh, what's it called like unsynced like an older one yeah like uh probably. like the previous ver- version i think that's yeah that's probably what i probably just hadn't synced but i can see your i can what is it a anonymous loris you're you're literally looking at it too and your <laughs> face is like your face is like a fucking meerkat and your name is anonymous loris because your settings tremendous that sounds like something i would do that sounds exactly like something you would no do. I, I think that's a default to uh to the thing anybody with security settings on yeah well anonymous loris and i are, are here hi everybody we're, we're here to take your questions in mailbag madness part two um we are winding down its season 14 um dan's not here yet because he said he would be here on time and then said i'm gonna be he said i'll be good for eight o'clock i'm playing a game at 5 30 so guaranteed he'll be here in like half an hour to the show he'll show up probably almost almost no chance he's gonna arrive here on time um that's okay i don't know about argue. the meerkats because i have a badger as an icon in a lot of things nice a little honey badger, badger if you will mm-hmm. yeah that's right you're susceptible to memes at an early age um I am yeah yeah that's fair uh so uh, i guess uh we should probably continue um our what's been going on this week with Baldercast. how's Baldur's cake going <laughs> how's, how's our latest episode of Baldercast? i mean i finished the game I don't oh, know if I had you? done that last week. No, no way. I got, Already? Well, I mean, I got to the end. There is, it's one of those like, having now finished the game, it's very much the journey rather than the ending. Ah, right. Like the interactions along the way and the decisions you make along the way and like who's there with you and all that sort of stuff is way more engaging than like the plot. Right. Yeah, like yeah. The it's end, not, the like end ma- story like is effect. like a mass effect yeah. where you're like chasing down everybody's stories as opposed to actually caring about whether you get the blue light or the red light at the end yeah there's a little bit of that there is some significant difference to spoil it for some people but there's a little bit of green light red light blue light like oh my eyes glow green in this one oh my eyes glow <laughs> red in broke, this one if it ain't it's broke like, don't fix it go with yeah. the classics <laughs> yeah it's solid though i uh it sounds like I'm, it's good yeah i'm enjoying it now I'm playing it through it again making different decisions somewhat less evil there's a lot more surviving refugees in this run. <laughs> it's a lot less civilian casualties in round two. I mean, it wasn't like a accident. We killed. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, I knew I what was going on. I, we I knew the whole time. Die, Ash. When the goblins were like, hey, we got to go kill all those refugees and those, those disgusting druids. And it's like, why are we killing them? I don't know. God wills it. Okay, <laughs> I'm in. Sold. Yeah, right. <laughs> dark elf you're part of the group now <laughs> well, i'm glad that you've i'm glad that you've you've ruined wait what's the what's the planet farin i think it's farin in the forgotten realms isn't it they run it's farin, the sword coast farin. that's yeah, what i was about to say crin and i was like oh wait that's Dragonlance. uh abertoral yeah Tor- toral dark sun which one's dark sun farin's the uh the continent abertoral is the planet oh there you go that's yes. right that, that'd be that you learned that name of the planet in Spelljammer. I learned the name of that planet because I made the mistake of reading a few of the books around D&D, most of which are probably good, but unfortunately, uh, 
I read a good one, and then I read one that poisoned it so hard I dropped every one of them. And it I have depends. not read another forgotten <laughs> realm. I, I I know they're not even the same authors or the same subjects, but it's like yeah. I don't care anymore. Early this is TSR more, is I don't give a crap. Hit and miss. Oh, early this wasn't TSR early. Was very when, this wasn't miss. early. This was recent. It was like, oh dear. I mean, oh, ten okay. years now, but okay. Well, my I read all the '90s ones. I read like all the Elminster Ed Greenwood ones, and they are very hit and miss because it's basically Elminster writing like a a, a power fantasy about himself, which is very I mean, interesting. If I recall, I think I actually told you this story as the only book that I've just put down. I just refuse to read. You just refuse to finish it. <laughs> yeah, it's like I've read lots of books of all kinds, and that was the only one where I was like, you know what? I don't care. I don't I care. I've lost all. nothing by putting this I, down except to gain back my time. I'm losing things by reading this. It's hurting me. I I should stop. <laughs> There's a cost associated with yes. this. There's a price being paid with every page being flipped, and you know what? It ain't worth it. Whatever nice. the outcome is here. Oh, this person is now writing the official lore in the player's handbook. Sweet. Yeah. I'm glad this hasn't gotten stupid. <laughs> thank, thank God for that. Well, thank, thank you for the latest installment of, of, of Baldercast. Um, yeah, did you do anything Fae related? Uh, Dan and I played a game. How'd that go? He's not here. I, yeah, you can, well, won, you can tell me whatever you want, and there's no one to verify. Uh, we played Rescue, because he had never played oh, Rescue Oh, that's before. right. How'd that go? uh he brought his j or not jsa i always call you ching jsa he brought his yu ching million bots and all uh hollow echo thing oh right yeah yeah where he's, he's doing as many 55 mil bases as you can get in an army and i think like i don't know i think he realized that it's it's kind of fun but it doesn't do anything like when the sphinx yeah. took its mask off at the end of my at the end of his first turn and was like, I have come to dismantle your army. And just is like, dead TR bot, dead TR bot, dead TR bot, dead guy, dead guy, dead guy. And like, yeah, he kills it in the end because he's got MSV2 marksmanship robots. Did It did not, like, they they barely held on as he just started getting chewed apart. Yeah, they can't play rescue very well either because they can't sit it back. Because remotes Correct. can't. Yeah. Now, Canrans can. and he, Canrans can, yeah, yeah, sure. I like any of his humans have, can, yeah. He has three of those, and they're all hollow echoes as well. Oh, they're so good. So, like, Cameron's are really good. I think he had something like 27 models deployed at the start of the game. Jesus Christ, it's all the hollow uh, echoes? That's wild. And they're all just hollow echoes, and they're all actual yeah. models. He's not using any tokens. And they're oh, yeah, yeah. Well, because that's right. Stuff. That's right. He was he just painted like three of everything, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, lots of robots, but yeah, I don't know. Rescue's great. I They've gotten rid of the, the saturation zone across the middle, as near as I can tell. Really? Um... Yeah, I didn't. I did not see it in the text there, and we I played it, it was still that there. Way. I, I, it definitely used to be. It was in the first definitely incarnation of it. Yeah, I thought it was still. Let me double well, check. Doesn't look like it, but rescue is still like such an iconic mission, in my opinion, for Infinity, because there is nothing like it in any other. Mm -hmm. game. Like, there's no other game that you're gonna play that has the mechanical and like ability to just do that. Mm, yeah, you're right. It's just an exclusion zone. It's not a yeah. saturation zone anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I did. I played that. And did I paint anything? No. Wait, did no. we go to a tournament? We went to a tournament? Yeah, you and Dan went to that tournament. Oh, oh that's yeah, we, we went to the Hotter Than Hell. We should basement. definitely talk about that. Oh, my God. I, I, I almost forgot about that. We almost forgot yeah. about the tournament we took. And, I, and actually, well, I mean, I was going to talk about uh, Summer Siege, but yeah. I forgot you guys went to a tournament, too. We did. I won that tournament. I know you did because you took the most cancerous list you could think of. <laughs> the no, last part of this I, podcast was all about that. Although I, I think diced, you changed it up at the end. Yeah, I brought double Yodem. Uh no, I won because I diced my opponents into the into the ground. I like <laughs> so you didn't I've earn never, any of it either. Oh I've God. never seen it as bad as that. Like to give you an example of the kind of stuff that happened, uh Yodem is suppressing. Um Toha guy with HMG and a symbiomate so goes around the corner. Shoots the uh, shoots the um, Yodem, Yodem crits in ARO. He rolls a one and a two for his armor saves and dies. Oh my god! Okay. Through his arm twelve uh, TI. <laughs> wow, that's his first order. <laughs> oh <laughs> After I had gone, and you first. killed and you killed the like invincible Sukiya with a symbiote. Yep. And then proceeded to Oof. kill every single model that tried to walk forward. Like it was the room mission, and there was one. Uh, mim six digger standing in the room the entire game 
and none of his You're models could even get on a digger. You're such that, an asshole. None of them could even get That's line funny. of sight into the room. Two Yotams standing on each side and two tackleware bots coordinating suppression, and they just annihilated anything that tried to come close. And like it got to the one point where he went to shoot me with his uh his Galrail sniper. And then I realized that wait a second, I passed these armor saves on threes. You sure do. No, I'm not gonna break suppression. Go ahead, just spend go all ahead. the orders you want. Yeah. I'm not gonna die. <laughs> I got, I got, I got, a, I got an eighty-five percent set chance of succeeding these saves. Yeah, I'm sorry, ninety percent. Ninety percent. It's a ninety right. percent yeah, success yeah, rate. Fail. And sometimes he missed, and I didn't even shoot back, like because he was outside of suppression, but I didn't want to break it. So I'm just like, go ahead, shoot me again, shoot me again. Never failed to save. I don't think the Yotams took any wounds just, that game. Just, they're like a transformer getting shot with a twenty-two. Yep. Just completely pinned him down. Uh, my second game was against a military orders. And he moves up. He's got a uh, multi marksman, hollow echo. Oh my god! What are oh, they sepulchre knight. Sepulchre knight comes up, goes to shoot the uh, the yotam. First order, first arrow from the yotam, crits him, kills him. <laughs> oh my god! And this just kind of continued throughout the last of uh, the last round, where my lieutenant cutter is suppressing in his deployment zone after killing eight models of a steel phalanx guy and then atalanta active turn hidden deploy atalanta reveals and shoots him through smoke so she hits the cutter on 15s because he's suppressing and he hits her on threes because he's capped out at minus 12 and i'm like i'll just suppress it'll work out he shoots me puts me down a wound shoots me puts me down a wound shoots me i make my save shoots me i crit him and kill it tremendous <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I just... So people just ground themselves into dust, basically, against these two Yotams. At, or or the Yotam Cutter in the last mission. Right, 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 right. Lieutenant Hidden Deploy Cutter, who is sitting on a rooftop being bait. Fun. Yeah, so that was... So you made event. new friends, made lots of people loved it. I'm sure it was so great. Everybody was super happy. I mean, it was funny. I liked uh, having BS-15. That was pretty cool. BS-15 is, I mean... It's it's the highest BS in the game, so it feels good. Yeah. Uh, outside of a link, I haven't had a model with BS15. Other than Joan, who, like, again, she only really links when I've played. So, like, I've never had, like, this single powerhouse. Because I never played uh, Swiss Guard. I never played Aquila Guards. Right, right. And, like, I never went that route. And so I've only ever played, like, Hawk Islam. And even then, 99% of the time, I cap out at BS13. Because I just don't bring the guys who are better than that. In the way I like to play. Armor 10 BTS 9 is real fun though. BTS 12 with that sweet, sweet uh uh fairy dust. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Realized just... that when Pandora came up and he's like, wait, what's your BTS? You. I'm like 12. He's like, oh fuck. <laughs> 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 that, but that was the point. I, I posted the you watch the light face in his eyes. Yeah, well, this is like he's on the ropes. He's he's got a cutter suppressing most of his army on one side, and then the ones that the cutter can't see are being suppressed by the Yotam on the other side. And his guys were just like surrounded, and he he's able to sacrifice two of his guys to get smoke out to at least block and then move up on me. And then he realizes that he could go and try and like hack the Yotam, and it is like, oh, oh, this isn't gonna work. Like, this is poor. Yeah. Yeah, pretty funny all around. Um, good, good event took place at the Legion Hall. So food and drinks and all that are right there. Air conditioned, nice little table setups. Not as nice as the couches that you have, but hey, there's <laughs> chairs all over. Not not everything can be Legion Hall twenty four, which is a fantastic Legion Hall. But yes, it's it, there. The it's been yeah venues. We've been lucky with venues last a while. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, we'll let Dan do his own thing, but obviously I was running Summer Siege this past weekend, which went great. Um, we had a few, it was smaller this time around, but it was the middle of summer, so I wasn't surprised. And we're ending the, the season, so everyone's just kind of like coming in for funsies. Um, we had some interesting like uh, final results. Uh, our top dog for this last one was um, Rat King 99 playing Caledonians, which was really cool. And then in, uh, and actually um, his list was actually rather interesting. He took, his list one was pretty standard. It was like Wallace, McMurrow, Mormare, Gray, Isabel, 
gray and then like a violent uh, like a volunteer link so it's like a five-man volunteer link and then a um uh harris with uh the mormare the gray and isabel and then usha kataran little scots guard missile launcher a couple highlanders and a csu um yeah it was like pretty box standard it was cool to see it do well i uh, didn't have double mormare but did have a single mormare which was um the good mormare <laughs> which is uh which we call it no mormare um the good uh the good wolf which is mcmorrow uh, and then his second list, which I was just about to pull up. And this one was only two SWC. It was like a, a lower SWC list, and it was just like type two rifles forever. So it was Wallace with type two rifle, McMurrow again, and then Gray with a t- type two boarding shotgun, Mormir, NCO, Visor, and Isabel, all type two rifles. There's a whole Harris with type two rifles. And that same volunteer link, uh, SAS's, Usha, Motorized 112, Cataran, and then the Sectet. So he had like. He had basically like a brawler list and a more sort of like ranged arrow list. And they both looked really good, really nicely painted, did a great job painting them. So it was very cool to see that. Um, we had uh, Skinly in second. He was playing Yu Ching. Uh, and his first list was called Chonky Boys and Bots. Had a Guage in it, which I thought was super cool to see. Uh, Ninja Hacker, Mech Engineer with a Yao Zhao. Uh, Krakow Renegade, my favorite miniature in the game, the Space Pirate. Um, the Chai Yi, Yai Kong, and then a Pangalang. Uh, Evo, regular Pangalang, just like Baggage Bot. Uh, Husong, HMG, and then the Dao Yang, the Lieutenant. Uh, Mo Wang, NCO with the Red Fury. And then Celestial Guard and two Kuang Shis as monitors. And like a cheap group two, basically. Go out and do things and power the Mo Wang. Uh, and his group two was the last Chonky Boys. Uh, it was called Where Everybody At. <laughs> it's like a, um Invisible Guy Army. So it was the same Mo Wang, uh, but this time it had the Tiger Sword of Spitfire, Nauf, uh, Killer Hacker Ninja, a Panglang, Chai Panglang, and the Dao Yang. So a lot. And then a Luching, um, Drop Troop, Specialist Operative, uh, Tiger Soldier Paramedic, and then the same monitor with like all the Quang Shi. So he had lots of orders powering basically a couple Tiger Soldiers to come in and like jump on your head and kill you, which I thought was a cool list. And they're both Vanilla Yuching. It's just really neat. So like he took a vanilla list and came second, which I thought was very cool. Didn't didn't use the tactical sort of like power, the mechanical power. Uh, and then we had Jordan Obiscus, Obi 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 Obiscus, Obiscus, yeah. And he took uh, Starmada again, beautifully painted, all in this like neon sort of like uh, uh, was it Far Cry Blood Dragon kind of like like scheme. Um, and he had some Kappas. So he did like the multi sniper with double Kappa hacker. Double Raven Eye, one's an LT, um, Psychop MSV1 with an Anapulsar, Cyber Ghost, Classic uh, Hacking Device Plus, so you can get that white noise if he needs to, Roadbot and an Epsilon with an HMG. Uh, and then he had the Raptor with the Diva Bot, Multi Rifle, uh, Killer Hacker one. Oh, apparently Dan's here. We'll let him in late as ever. Um, and uh, an Oko, Varangian, and a, a Sarko. And then suck that if he was using it. Oh, sorry, and a Millicent with a missile launcher. So he had some ability to um, throw pictures and do Hello? missiles on that one. Hey, man, you, you, you're here. We're just going over how Spring Offensive went. Oh, wait, Spring Offensive. Summer Siege. Uh, and then his other one was called Roadbots Roll Out. And it had uh, like the Roadbot Paramedic, a Zeta, a Sarko, Millicent, Kita, Varangian in group two. And then group one was the same Kappa group, the five-man Kappa group with another Roadbot. Uh, paramedic and oko cyber ghost uh, with the same killer hacker device this time around in a lambda to fix up mr zeta so like a zeta list and a non-zeta list and that was it so great event uh good size we went for um some food afterwards the brass monkey which is really nice uh and yeah it's just a really good day really good day of games um we actually got to play a game against spud because we didn't need a ringer which was great uh and he was so like <laughs> when he played last time he was so like done with having people roll win initiative and go first and destroy him that he made a list that like 80 percent of the models are burst two or higher in arrow. <laughs> and that was his that was his like ringer list and i was like what are you doing he's like i just wanted to bring something that was cancerous and get to have a turn so he brought up a kunin list that was three sin eaters um, I think it was two of the two of the HMGs and one with a sniper rifle, and two with Mark 12s and one with a sniper rifle. A full like um Moira link that are all burst too, like with like Spitfires and everything. 
um the full tr bots so like a group of tr bots uh and then a bunch of like camel markers in the middle to to like obliterate you with mines if you came too close so it was just toxic and i played him in between rounds with my military orders and literally he never took a turn and obliterated most of my army just like walking towards it was really funny um chat overall is a good weekend had a great time that uh, was a good way to end up the season uh everybody's excited for the next season and i think that's gonna be that's gonna be at some point in the fall i haven't decided yet because we don't have the mission pack right so we can't plan anything but it's gonna be fun and that was it for me what about you dan how'd you do on the weekend owen was just telling us how he took the most friendly list possible and then diced everybody into oblivion how'd uh-huh. you do um i made some bad decisions i got diced slightly and I made more bad decisions. And then I crushed my last opponent. So the EM grenade launcher couldn't carry the whole mission. So it was doing pretty good, but then a knock to fire showed up. He missed, but then I was pinned down. Um and I couldn't even poke out because then you know everything blows up. But then ah, turns yes. out if I would have known about what he was playing, I would have known his lieutenant. And so I could have shot EM grenades on his lieutenant and dumped like another five orders that way and then if right. i get him and lost the lieutenant uh then i probably can win the game this is one of those things where like i'll remember this is the lieutenant options this army has next time yeah for sure it was like oh he's got like whip 16 and oh wait there's the dude on top oh yeah it can only be this guy <laughs> so so there's that and then my second game was versus steel phalanx and it was, I had so many like bashy bazooks and uh, guys coming in the side. And I'm just like, template, template, template. And they're just like, I pass all my saves. And I'm like, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. So See? now nothing's dead and I don't have any blue dudes. So then, uh, so then I lost that one. Um, but I got lots of points. But then, and then the last game, uh, I went first and I just blew them up. And then he couldn't do much, and then I blew him up again. And I, he didn't have what he had one model left on his last turn, and he chose to fight a one-one, and the one-one beat him, and he exploded. Uh, he was playing the Bakunin nuns, yep, the new stuff. So they seem pretty cool, but uh, yeah, the dice just went my way on that one, and it was just never a doubt. It was just everything just just exploded. So fun. it was a fun game. <laughs> It, it was, How was the hall and the the folks and like the venue and the prizes and stuff? Yeah, I mean the Legion is always a nice place to host. Uh, lots of alcohol flowing, and uh, decent food, and uh, everyone seemed to be in a good mood. It was really good prize support, and uh, there was a lot of people that showed up from up to three hours away. So, or I guess Edmonton is a bit further than that. We were three hours away, and Edmonton is much further than that. Yeah, because it's more so. Yeah, so it was it was a really good turnout from like everybody, which is nice because that was like when I'm thinking of like when War Machine was in its heyday, um, we'd have a tournament and we'd get people from all over the province showing up to different tournaments. So um, that was really awesome to see. So hopefully, it feels really good. Yeah, you managed to pull that many people. It was nice. Um, And then I just finished a game now. That's why I was late. And I played for the first time against the Avatar. Oh, shit. How'd that go? Oh, my gosh. So I'm like, okay. I have, like, two Swick in my list. I have no MSV. But I have five sources of EM. Surely that would be something. (laughs) I was Starmata. I had two Sarkos. uh, I had two Raven Eyes. uh, And then I also had Casanova, which tried to infiltrate and failed. Andromeda infiltrated and passed. So I was like having fun with infiltrate. <laughs> it turned out not to be a terrible list. I ended up winning 6 2, but then I realized I was cheating because I was civivacking with remotes. Oh, yeah. So Just then I did asked, this. It was 7 2, but then I lost 2 1 in the end because right. I was cheating. Because <laughs> you're just cheating so badly. <laughs> but, if, right, yeah. but if I had realized I had lots of other orders I could have got points out of, and I think I still win, but whatever. It was a wash. Yeah, but anyway, so this is what happened. I walk up, Sarko lays a, a EM mine beside the avatar, and I, I and I walk out and shoot him with a submachine gun. So he septurizes me. The EM mine fails. 
Uh, and then I and I lose my Sarko. I'm like, okay. So I have Casanova who failed. He's kind of on that side of the board, and Avatar is so it. So I just I run up, run up. I nano pulsar some dudes that were on the ground, kill them all off because it was there was a speculative killer with a regen that I had recently killed. I said I lay an EM mine on the corner, and then I walk around the corner. He sepsterizes me. I dodge because I dodge on fourteens. I fail to dodge. I get, I get stolen, and then the EM mine works, and then he's in lost lieutenant. But he's got Dr. Worm, and he does his crazy run, gets the Avatar back on his like last order, because he's got all veteran orders, because his combined army. Um, so he didn't do much on his second turn, but the Avatar is back as his lieutenant. Right. And then on his last turn, he killed a bunch of stuff, but couldn't get anything, and I was just running around with uh, with some dudes grabbing things. So it was a really fun game, but it was like, man, if Casanova made that dodge, you were just going to monofilm in a guy that could only reset as an action. Yeah. And it would yeah, be so juicy. Great. Yeah. That would have been juicy monofilm, like a juicy use of, um, of yeah. Casanova. But uh, no, it was good. It was it was against one of the uh, the more newer, he's been playing for a while, but he's like newer to uh, tabletop games. Um, so, but I saw him making a lot more better decisions. So that was, that was fun. Stupid Tigers. I hate them so much. Oh, they aren't even bad anymore. They used to be so much worse. I know. I know. They used to be so much worse, and Owen took eight of them every time we played. And I had the best month of my life. <laughs> but either way, I've played a lot of Infinity recently. It feels good. Uh, and I haven't played in a while before that, so it's been a good time. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to get you back in the groove. Well, we are ready for some more Mailbag Magnus. Thank you, everybody, who put in more questions. The link is in the video description. I know it's hard to get to, so I will continue to post it in our Discord as well uh, when I post these episodes. You guys can grab it and go ask more. Um, and that is the key feature for tonight. And Dan is finally here, so we can have a tiebreaker for when Owen and I fundamentally disagree on every part of this uh, following segment. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah. So first one's from Class Claywood, and it's for everybody. Um, and his question is, why are there sectorials and then soup factions, both from a fluff perspective and a game mechanical perspective? For example, why should the fire team rules not just be available to any army? Uh, my opinion as a new player is that only sectorials should exist. Who wants to lead this one? Go for it, Dan. You're a new player. Uh, I think you're wrong. Okay, That's elaborate. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Um, good, good job, Dan. So vanilla is like the cool thing where there's there's certain combinations of models that would be too powerful that you'd have to. Uh, it's like kind of like it, it limits design choices, and so when vanilla is like an amalgamation of everything, then you can take your full kind of collection and you can play whatever you want and it has like a fun i feel like vanilla is more designed for more veteran players sometimes um but then you have your full repertoire of all of your dudes there's a few profiles that are exclusive to certain factions but but mostly you can take everything but then to limit the power of being able to take whatever you want then you don't get the fire team bonus but I still think vanilla is plenty powerful, even without the fire team bonus, because of the flexibility of what you can bring. And so, I think it's a really elegant solution to to army building. So, I think it's pretty good as it is. See, what about you, Owen? Um, I mean, it solves a lot of the like, what, what, when can I link? When can I not link? Who can link? Why link? Like all that kind of fades away if you just make it where there's no delineation between them, or rather, there there is nothing to decide between because there isn't a vanilla choice. And like, if they're gonna go further with making models that are only available in certain sectorials and like undermining the idea of them all being available as one like mega faction, yeah, why not just, just do that then? Like, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I have a three-part answer. <laughs> There's three reasons why the game is structured this way. The background of the game is structured this way. And the business model is structured this way. I'm going to start with the background because the background, I think, um, predisposed everything because this game started as background for an RPG. 
Um, and the idea here is background wise, you have what essentially boils down to planets and then countries. So a whole planet is the, let's say the vanilla faction, and then the countries within that planet or, you know, subsets of who lives on that planet are the, um, the sectorials. And what that allows you to do is explore an area of a grander theme and give it its own personality and life and stories. So the Merovingians being French, I think Ariad is probably the best illustration of this and maybe the nomads because they are distinct districts within a larger community, right? Um, and then mechanically speaking, you then are allowed to play with that theme, give it its own powers um, by sort of siloing off certain profiles that only exist or are native to that area or country. And that's where we get into the, um, the whatchamacallit, the, the rules mechanics-wise. Fire teams exist in order to add mechanical advantage to the people who come from the same place and fight together all the time, being better trained and operating better together. So there's both a fluff reason and a, and a mechanical reason. When you have less options, um, you should gain a benefit balance-wise. What you don't get from diversity, you get from being able to include certain things uh, in combination. And that's gone on for you know 10 years now. Um, and then finally, we have the business point of view. So the business point of view is when you are a new player or you're purchasing into a faction for the first time, um, if you buy a sectorial, which is typically easier to collect because it's a smaller subset of models and you can get a complete collection relatively easily. Once you have that collection, it still has somewhere to go because you can usually cross some of those pieces into other sectorials. Like for instance, if you buy remotes, they work for the entire faction, unless it's the nomads and it's the friggin' meteors on and it doesn't work for Corner for some reason, just fix that guys. Um, and then the greater sort of faction allows you to use your whole collection. So if you collect multiple sectorials across that, it's like spokes on a wheel and they all come together in the middle in some variation. So um, I also very much like the way those three components are structured because I think it's good for a business. Um, it's good for the player to be able to start with something small and build it into something bigger. Um, and it makes sense to me both from a background and mechanical point of view. I will now take questions from the floor. I mean, sure. Like, like you're not wrong. Yeah. Like, I get that from like a let's expand our collections and things like that. Um, but I do think that there's a point where you're gonna it's gonna flip. It's gonna go from oh, it gets too big. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, don't get like, don't be wrong. And, I, I would say I would say what I'm talking about is the intention, you know what I mean, or where yeah. it started and and where it was most effective. I, I do think there needs to be trimming and pruning. I, I you and I have agreed on that. Yeah, so I, I think that's just my my kind of perspective on it now is that like yeah that was that was what it had been and like even when i was trying to make my point was like this was the thing that it made sense to me before but we're with the changes that are being made it is making less sense to me kind of going forward mm -hmm. like what's the point like yeah just, it does seem just... like there are, there's some effort being made though to trim that stuff down mm -hmm. all right the omc asks to everyone why does Atalanta, Adal Agema's NCO, not have the NCO skill? And why do Agema Marksman not have the Marksmanship skill? Uh, I think these are troll questions because the following comes and says, to roll this into a real question, CB seems to love to give units and rules unique names, uh, include inside jokes and characters, and include dense lore. While this is great for dedicated players, does this raise like a barrier of entry for new uh, and casual players to be too high? So I guess the about this question is like, sorry. Yeah. He talks about this all the time. It comes up probably every game that I play Steel. Okay, Fans. go on. It's just silly. If if their if their name says NCO and they don't have the NCO rule, why? Yes. It's just confusing. Good question. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's I don't I understand like if they used to have NCO or NCO didn't be a rule and it has a name, but you gotta update it. Like it's just it's just ridiculous. Any term that is a a a mechanical like um reference you know what i mean like if it if it has a rule associated with it that term should not be used in any of like the delineation and naming of of a, of a unit i agree yeah it's 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 that it was fucking confusing when i first started playing like once you kind of get to know the the rules it's like you just start ignoring and even even corvus belly does this where it's like the name and then in the fire team, what they are referred to is like completely different sometimes, or it just like grabs one part of the name. 
Looking so at you, like, Maki and Stigmata. Yeah. So it's like they're Both trying to be different like different names. Who cares about the full name? Well, we care about this part of the name. You're like, okay, but like, then why do you have that full name there? And it's just, especially in list building, it's just at least take it out of like the list building. Maybe have that name like that, but then the list building take it out or something. I don't know. It just seems silly. It just feels like one of those things that would naturally just get pruned out of the the name for something because it exists as something else at this point. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's absolutely no reason to have it in there, except for fluff. And who cares about the fluff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who cares about the fluff, but like it, it, you're right. If you're if you've gone to the lengths of like removing and unnesting rules, you might as well also remove any references that might be confusing to the player. So there's your answer. Turns out, yeah, it is confusing to new people. Because there's a new person, they got confused. And he's played other miniature games, so it wasn't coming from nowhere, and it was still still annoying. Yes. I don't know. I don't care, but I've played for a bunch of times, so for me, it's one of those, like, eh, I'm just looking up. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> check, check the, the lack of trust, like trust would verify, as they say. Uh, so then Nichols asks, and this is everybody, uh, it's very easy to get lost in a turn and all the possibilities. I'm really curious how each of you approaches an active turn. Do you have like a mental checklist of priorities that you work through? Do you pick a single goal or two and work all your orders to accomplish that? Are there any particular considerations you apply to your turn every time? Uh, and he says, you've been an awesome resource and have loved listening to the game and having this cast to listen to. So, um, they're learning the game and having this cast to listen to. So, who wants to take this one first? Like, how do you approach the active turn when you're coming into it? What are some, like, general principles to that? First of all, I want to apologize that we're, we're the place that you're learning things from. I'm sure there's much better people out there. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so If you know uh, who they are, tell us so that we can learn from them, too. <laughs> yes, please um now how i start a turn is it's like i always and it's like with every every kind of like strategy game is how do i score points it was always the back of my mind and it's like is it end of game is there like a thing do i need to kill enough do i need to disable their hand so they can't push buttons or do i need to whatever and you just like ask questions of like what weapons does this guy have like how can i advance up the board how can i be safely up the board and it's kind of like okay, like, where do I kind of want to end up in an ideal situation? And then you do the easier things first. And then and then you just kind of go through. And sometimes there is some paralyzing things, but it's kind of like, okay, well, does this guy want to move? Does this guy want to stay here? Or I'm happy with this. And sometimes moving the people first is better because sometimes you're like, oh, I'll just move these guys later. And then your fight doesn't go as well as you want. And you have to spend like four orders instead of two orders killing somebody. And all of a sudden those extra two orders are like, oh, I didn't move those other guys. And then on your turn, everybody dies because they're out of cover or they didn't advance up into where they needed to be or where you wanted to be for defensive reasons. So um, prioritize strategy over killing unless the strategy is killing. And I don't, that maybe sounds weird and stupid, but yeah, just say that in your head beforehand and you'd be surprised how helpful it is. Sweet. What about you, Owen? Um, I mean, I don't really plan these things out all that much. I'll be honest. I'm I'm very much like meme. I just had the meme of like <laughs> in my head of 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 uh, what's his name of um the Joker uh, <laughs> dressed as a nurse. <laughs> like, oh, do I look like a guy with a plan? Like I built lists before you around... even started talk, I could just see, I could just okay, see I, that guy. I build lists around models that I like, and then I just try and use them. And so, like, if I'm gonna play my list that is two Sunduck butts, two Fides, McMurrow, and a bunch of Delami, with a a bare bones, not even full link team of guys who are there to push buttons, I'm gonna just play with the models that kill people. And then just try and remember that I have to do the objective at some point. And I look at my opponent's army and go, hey, who do I think I can kill this turn? And then I try and kill them all. And <laughs> if it doesn't work, I go, well, I lose this one. We'll get them next time. And that's kind of it. Like, there's no real, like, 
ah, here was the grand plan of how things were going to go. It was like, <laughs> boy, the Yodam sure can kill another guy if I keep going. Wait, wait, wait. I need to put two tokens off to the side so I remember to push buttons at the end mm, of the scenario. There's the good point. So, so like, <laughs> you do have a mental, like, I get, I get that your answer is that to an, I don't know how to say this to make it sound like you, but to hammer everything looks like a nail is the saying. I was going to say to an Owen, everything looks like a Dan. <laughs> Maybe that's how we say it. <laughs> um Just but i think that there's stupid. some i think there is some actual like methodology there where you do pump your own brakes a little bit because you know you get kill happy and you put some shit aside you do it kind of right at the beginning or at least i do where i'll go and uh i'll like like i did it with dan playing our game the other day where i know that i need to to rescue a guy and i know my fide is one order away from doing it so no matter what else i do I need to leave that one order aside so that the fide can do the mission so I have a chance to win. And you put that one token aside there to do the scenario, and then you go back to how many how how many orders am I gonna need to kill all these people? And that's what I uh that's what I do. I I don't know. And then it's purely down to like what do I feel like I could get away with? Like what is it that's stopping me from getting away with something else? Like, hey, Atalanta's there and I can't move any of my tags because she's going to just kill them in ARO. Who do I have that could try and seal the deal there? Or do I just have to deal with that and face tank it? And yeah, how do you get rid of your roadblocks? Yeah, and then it's it's just kind of, it's it's really having a knowledge of what your models are and are capable of, I think is a big part of it doing that mental math when you see like what are my tools available for x problem and i know what the problems capabilities are and what are my capabilities to deal with it yeah that works sweet um i have a similar strategy to what you have i typically look at like there's different priorities and different missions right so like in some missions if it's if it's end of game scored I usually look at the scoring matrix and go, well, what do I have to do right now that's unopposed? So, like, if there's two classifieds in an otherwise end-of-game scored mission, I'll get the classifieds done as early as possible. Because I'll forget about them otherwise or get bogged down or get mired or whatever. And then I typically try to mentally divide my order pool into what do I need to get done? What can I try and get done this turn? How important is it that I get it done? And then where do I need to be when your turn starts to stop you from doing the same thing? That's usually my like mental math. How many orders do I need to set up a good defense? And then what does that leave me with to go and play ball, right? To go push a button, flip a switch, kill an HVT, do a classified, whatever that is. Um, and then I try and get it done within those orders. And the biggest thing for me that I struggle with is restraint, <laughs> is actually not pushing too far so that I'm I'm exposed or I'm out of position at the end of my turn. Um, and setting up like a decent a decent like defense afterwards because there are times like especially first turn you can get kill happy and it's just like no i should really just be satisfied with the kills i just got one more kill isn't going to change anything but that same order on a you know a coordinate could have four guys suppressing which will really wreck your turn and i should do that instead so i try and delineate like what am i doing versus where do i want to be when you start your turn and how how does that affect like the game state going forward into the next turn so i can do it again and that's really it. Um, so I think that's my mental checklist is like, what's the lowest hanging fruit for this turn? And then how do I want to, how do I want my, my, my assets to be disposed at the end of the turn? Cause that really does dictate what you have left going into your next active turn, right? If you haven't done a good job of that, you do not have that same order pool typically going into the turn after the one you just completed. So it's an important like conservation step, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Me. Killing, killing the one too many guys definitely comes up. Definitely. Especially if you're using a power piece, right? Like if that power piece is just not suppressing it in the turn and in the wind. Which is you why know. you bring multiples of everything. Never just one. Never one Yodem. If it's AVA2, why shouldn't yeah. I take two? Boy, Asawiras are pretty good fighters. Probably should bring three. Probably should bring AVA3. <laughs> Sunduck butt's real good. Two Sunduck butts. <laughs> it's more than twice as good. <laughs> it's... It's the eight dreadnought strategy. <laughs> An individual dreadnought's not very good. Five dreadnoughts is pretty five obnoxious. Dreadnoughts, on the other hand, eight dreadnoughts or five dreadnoughts with three more. That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Uh, Tebrin Nim asks everybody, uh, what was the first model that really got you into your first Infinity Army? Like when you were attracted to an army and you started from scratch, what was the first model? Dan's not going to have, Dan had that chosen for him. So maybe you've got like your next army that you like a model from. Well, the, the model I was most excited about to paint and use was the Zeta. Mm, that's right. Cause I did give you my metal Zeta, didn't I? Mm -hmm. So. And you used yeah. the shit of him in the beginning too. He was like your your go to piece. Yeah, he was on most of my on my list. I miss him. I'm gonna bring him again. He's a fantastic hitting piece. <laughs> it is a legit nightmare. Are you eating right now? Should we move on to Owen? I think he's eating right he now. He sounds like he's chewing. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm eating broccoli. <laughs> You're eating broccoli, the worst podcasting food. All right, Owen. What about you? I mean. It's some of one of the nights. I don't know which one though. Just you like love the, the father night. The father night was a because he was huge. You had a, that father night in every army in the beginning. Remember the father night missile launcher, the one with the sword? Yeah, yeah. The profile because they never came every, out. He was in yeah. every single one of your models. Or Mark. I still have four of them. He's a great miniature. Yep. He's Dead. Just swinging that huge Dead. sword. He's gone. They replaced him with a younger, thinner model. That's right. <laughs> oh well, because they all became the Knight of Justice. Yeah, that's right. They 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 made that one profile. Like it's the same. It's the exact same profile. They just renamed it all the Justice. Yep, younger and thinner. Younger and thinner. That's true. Yeah. The <laughs> actual so model big. is. <laughs> um, and I think the AVAs went way down too. If Did I they recall correctly, let me look. Because it used to be four, and I don't think it's four anymore. It's probably not four, but it's, it's linkable. two. Is it two? Yeah. It's yeah. but he's in other armies, isn't he? He's in Svarlheim too. Yeah, but he was in the other armies before too. You just never well, first Svarlheim it didn't exist in that, but sure. like oh he's AVA two in Svarlheim as well. Yeah. But he's a wild card, so it makes sense. He's only two. Yeah. Because you just fill out every link with him. You wouldn't. They're like with 50 points. Arm five BTS nine. God, he's such a nightmare. Yep. Still yeah. Because I remember because I used to play Joan with three of them. You sure did. And as a pseudo link. Because they weren't a link everywhere. and you just coordinate them all. I mean, you could still do it. Just put in Defersen. So just do Defersen, double Night Justice, and... Uh, it's know. not the same. It is the same. He's it's not the same. Night Justice. Yeah, but he's like the bitch one with Armor 4 and BTS 6. Ooh, but he's also he... a killer hacker. Yeah, that's called Liability. I love that guy. No way. He's Darth Vader. He'll kill everything. Yeah, maybe. Gabby's, maybe. Gabby's still great. Gabby still he's great. also not a 1.5 46 point missile launcher. Or... <laughs> two more of those <laughs> then you took three missile launchers so i brought four i played that list oh that's right four of them Joan, and four, yeah. then a bunch of irregulars right. and... oh that was not the game we played so this this is this this is owen at his most owen we played biotech four and he just left the knights of justice in the deployment zone to shoot me with missile launchers and AR. that was when i got one guy to stop playing that was so um, funny you just sat you just sat in the biotech he, four soup and you're like whatever on bts9 he was playing steel phalanx and he he was a big like it's always the end of the world every game you play like yeah, yeah. this one like if i lose this game they're gonna cut my fingers off like that was the vibe you got and so it was like every bit of advantage and so he plays steel phalanx and steel phalanx is really strong and still is very strong and then three father knights with missile launchers sit outside the biotech floor and he goes first and has to walk out and i'm like i'm not in cover i'm just standing I'm just or rather i'm not i'm not hiding i'm just standing there looking at your army just walk what are you what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah, i shoot you with a missile i mean two missiles i shoot you with a missile boy you sure are running out of orders be a shame if you didn't make it to that not gonna die from the poison they all died everything died and then uh that was constantinos leading a link because MSV2, and he just tore apart all of the Mirabadons. He was so good back then. This was nothing like him. Yeah, now there's like eight of him. Yeah, I think that's actually, like, somebody mentioned because I, I still like Constantinos, and someone was like, oh, he's not what he used to be, or he's not as good anymore, and I, I realized that the reason for that is that, like, there are now versions of him that are, like, just better for cheaper or even or the yeah. same price yeah linkable msv is pretty common now yeah like the black friar 
with a missile or a heavy rocket is legitimately cheaper and better at the job than Constantinos yeah. is. Yeah, and has albedo and all kinds of other advantages. That one doesn't have albedo, but Doesn't six sense both did. Oh, it's just the multi rifle. You, one of them does. Mm -hmm. You could bring him, and he's he's slightly he's the same points as the infiltration one, but from like a linkable perspective, and the fact that he is uh, oh he's not a wild card anymore. Shows how often I play this faction. Oh, but they can join like the crozier join link the or the Teutonic wave. The one, yeah, yeah. So they're they're gonna show up wherever they want to show up. But well, again, that's the same job that Connie's doing, and so you're like, hmm, I could bring the MSV two guy who's PS twelve or the MSV two guy who's PS thirteen. Connie doesn't have mimetism, does he? He does have mimetism, but yeah. does mimetism and special operative armed with a combi rifle outdo? Oh no, no, no! Don't get like, me wrong. He's he's yeah. he's yeah. He's toothless compared to what like he's the inferior the version now. Sure, yeah. And I and it's like that. That sucks. Like, oh well. I like his I like his infiltration version actually more now. Like unlinked, and just going after people with the assault pistol. Yeah. I mean, the problem too, again, though, is that like other people with infiltration exist who are the sure. same ish points yeah, as yeah. he is. And like, because the Trinitarians are him, but they have MIM6. Like, they're literally the same cost. No, I'm Why would you bring him? Or they're cheaper than he is. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know. It's whatever. I, uh, power creep. I'm just going to write it off as that. Sure. <laughs> the Trinitarians can't have comedy rifles, for one thing. Uh, yeah, all they have is boarding shotguns. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd rather, but to win a fight, I'd rather, if you're, you don't want to use a boarding shotgun when you're MIM6, right? You don't want to be in template range. You want, to use an, you want to use a gun that's not going to get you killed back by a template. So I bring the sniper? Um, sure, maybe. Who is the same cost? The same cost, yeah. Or the SMGs? They also all have flash pulses. I don't know. I don't I don't buy infiltrating snipers because they're in bad range when they start if you infiltrate them. All right, all right. How about just the infiltrating mine layer with the flash pulse, shock lines, and boring shotgun? He's great, yeah. But Same cost. Different job. <laughs> same cost. Is it? Yeah, a boarding shotgun decharge mine layer with FO. I mean, you could push buttons with him. You can hunt with Connie because he's got MSV and a assault pistol. That's all I'm saying. So you're willing to get into assault pistol range with him, but you're not willing to get into shotgun range. Well, I'm saying I don't have to. I can. You don't have to with a shotgun. But then you can't hunt at all because you you have no good range band. Like the assault pistol. The assault pistol is only used for the extra dice up close. Otherwise, you just use the combi. But you can still shoot it to 16 with the combi. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, anyway, my answer to that question <laughs> uh, is from way back at the very, very beginning of Infinity in Mark I. Um, and I still have this miniature in my army today, and it was the veteran Kazakh with the Type 2 rifle. Um, I loved that, like, metro look to the Kazakhs. I thought it was so cool. Um, I liked that they were wearing like ballistic armor, like modern day, like just like soldier armor, basically going up against these dudes in like big powered suits and tags and stuff. I just thought it was really cool that these guys look like soldiers um, and they didn't like high tech them. They just had this like really cool, heavy, low tech look. Uh, and I still have those miniatures today. My tack army is it has some like of literally the first infinity miniatures ever sculpted in it still. Um and they're still some of my favorites. All right, last question, and then we can talk a little bit about the uh, the interplanetario and how that all went. And this is from Man C Inventor. Uh, it's for everybody. It says Ash always says how good the starter sets are, and uh, Corvus Belly seems to lean into the sets, teaching you the game mechanics rather than for a power list. So between you all, can you come up with two seven order lists for a starter set? That you would be think would be perfect for introducing new gamers to Infinity. So if we can all open Army and pick a faction, how about just we pick the factions we've been playing lately? Make a seven order model list that you think would be good for starting Infinity. And we'll see if we're roughly the same point cost. Seven do, orders. I, I imagine we're not allowed to use tags. Dude, whatever you want. There's no rules. He didn't give us those rules. Like, whatever you want. There's a seven <laughs> like a good for teaching yeah. infinity. <laughs> so you're going to do Yu Chang. Owen's going to do, I don't know what the hell Owen does, Pano. I think I'm going to do Stormata. You do Stormata? Sure. Do Stormata. What do you do then, Owen? You do Hack? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do Hack. Okay. I don't know anything in Pano. I played Pano this like tournament, and I'm like, damn, my units suck. I don't know what any of them do. Why are you only whip 12? 
go back to school. Go back to school. Um, I will do. Uh, I'll do Pano, sure. And I'll do regular old Pano. I'm gonna do Kapu Kalki because why not? And I'm supposed to have a seven model list to teach the you. The model about. list you think is perfect for teaching infinity. All you want, you want. Tremendous. Hmm. I'm just gonna make a starter set. Be like, got him. <laughs> three gulams, three of this and three of that. Three gulams, and then one of each type of special or special guy. Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible idea. It, I mean that that has been. I the mean, format. there's, there's the clearly format some been research three, been three, done. Yeah, yeah, it's been three three AVA total line troops, and then a skirmisher, a medium infantry, a heavy infantry, and a warband typically, or or if it's not a warband, it's something similar, like it's some other you know off brand weird thing. I'm gonna go a different direction. All right, uh, because I want you. This guy. Because I think it's still important to do. Don't forget a lieutenant option. <laughs> oh, I got him. I got him. I'm just trying to make it interesting. And then I need a medium infantry. I'm still following that format, but I'm I have an idea for making it like slightly more interesting. And it's seven models, we said. So I need one of you. Uh, it doesn't say models. Seven orders, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Seven orders. Which is only relevant because I wanted to bring somebody with synchronized. <laughs> mm, gotcha. Because I'm like, I'm going to hit all of the major food groups of this game. <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of what I did. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's so funny. But that is how you taught me the game. So yeah, yeah, no, I mean that makes sense, right? Like you, you want a little bit of that stuff. I am very close. Well, I'm ready. Two to go. All right, you. Uh, go ahead. You start then. All right. So I made a capo calki starter set. Um. It has, it has the same format. So there's three gulams, one of whom is specifically a hacker and call out that he's a hacker. Um, and then another one's a doctor. The other one is just rifle shotgun guy. But all three of those are pretty ubiquitous. Um, we've got an Azrael because he's a rule of cool model and is a heavy infantry who's also susceptible to hacking. So you open up that door. We've got a Yuan Yuan who is a drop troop, but also irregular and impetuous. So you hit those two rules and has access to smoke grenades, which I think are a fundamental part of the game that Pano ignores, but every other faction leans on. Um, then we've got an Alhawa mine layer. So you have infiltrating marker state mine laying as a deployment rule. Then we have a Camille Evo bot because robots are like also a very important part of the game yep. and yep. two Nazmats. Oh, nice. Because then you can do G-Sync with your Ghulams and be like, oh, this is an incredibly valuable thing that I should have in almost every time it comes up. Like, there's exceptions, but if your guy's not part of a link, you really couldn't find three points for your for your sync bot. Anyway, yep. that's my seven. Cool. Uh, so I did something similar, um, but I went with the original format. So I have three line troops. I have a medium infantry, a heavy infantry, a skirmisher, and a remote. Because I did think that the remotes is something that's missing from um, star sets. Mine's end up, mine ends up being 200 points exactly and three SWC. So that's a legal list. Um, it's got a Kamau, MSV2, because I think having MSV is important, uh, with a multi-sniper rifle. 
is going to teach you the range game. Um, and then that's what our first line troop. So we have a like an SWC line troop. And the other two could be any of the profiles almost in their respective things. And that's a Fusilier with a combi rifle and a car who with a multi-rifle. And what it also means is you've got a uh, a model in this starter set that's from um, one, two, three different sectorials. So you have a Winter Force sectorial model, a Fusilier could be almost any of the sectorials, and then you have a Kamau, which is a Varuna sectorial. Then my medium infantry is a Crusader Brethren with a multi-rifle. So you have access to a drop troop. So I think that is important. You have the drop troop slash parachutist rules. Um, and that gives you access to a knight. So you have a knight list model. Uh, and then I have a Swiss Guard heavy machine gun for the other SWC. So you have access to min minus six, a cool heavy infantry like killer model. Um, and you've got the uh, like the, the last of like the rules to learn covered. And then my last two models, we have a Locust, which is a killer hacker, also an NCA model. The Swiss Guard can go in a variety of things too, also NCA. Um, and they've got a killer hacking device and a breaker combi rifle, but could be a couple of profiles actually in that list and a Fugazi drawn bot. So you have a hacker that also has a repeater and you get the access to like learning about remotes and stuff too. So the idea here is you had seven models representing all the sectorials um, and giving you access to basically um, like uh, the, the whole variety of rules. There's everything from SV to hacking to heavy infantry to the different SWC guns. Uh, there's like a Blitzen, AP Mines, Flamethrowers, Drop Troops, everything. So if, if this was your starter set, you could go, hey, here's like a smattering of every faction. Also, it's playable as an army, and it's 200 points. Mine is 141 and three swig. Nice. Which I, is also a legal list. Mm -hmm. It is a legal list, yeah. Mine, mine, being, mine having the Swiss Guard kind of tipped it up high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having guard, two Swiss big guard points, guys. Because the Locust is like 30, isn't it? Yeah, he's as 30 well. as well, yeah. Yeah, with the Alhawa. Yeah. Like uh, they're actually 20. the Kamau, the Crusader Brethren, and the Locust are all they're 90 points for the three of them. Yeah. 90 points. Yuan Yuan is eight, and the yeah, Alhawa is 22. Them. And so, like, the two yeah. of them are 30 points. I guess you could take a Vashi maybe instead of the Yanyan if you wanted to trip in somebody who's because the Yanyan's a mercenary, isn't they? They're, they're not actually a, a hack model. I mean, they're in this as a hack model. Oh, okay. Oh, in this you're doing faction. QK. That's right. You're doing yeah. QK. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, you're doing a sectorial. Um, and also, I wanted the smoke grenades. I think smoke grenades are like, like a fundamental part of the game. Um, that sure, gets yeah, overlooked. And, and it's definitely not something you're gonna learn playing. Uh, um, what should we call it? Pano. So yeah, Pano not? is not gonna teach you that, which sucks for Pano. But I think it's every other faction. Uh, isn't there an eclipse grenade in Pano? There's yeah, one. Yeah, on there, a robot. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one little eclipse grenade launch you can take. Nobody yeah. else. Even the even the mercenaries don't get them. Yeah, because I, I think every other faction in the game can play the smoke game to some degree, and some of them, like, crutch on it. Which I is mean, yeah, wild. some of them hard crutch on it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you, Agreed. Ariadna. Well, we'll post okay. these up in the patrons chat so you guys can see them. I'm going to do it right now. Uh, I went with a Kappa and a blue coat, and a raven eye. Ooh, the trinity. So you can bring e any of them as a lieutenant, but then also they have a bunch of profiles each that you can kind of fool around with. Uh, a bronze heavy machine gun, because you should always learn what total immunity does. And then a Nyoka parachutist, and then a roadbot paramedic, and then a law keeper with... Uh, I think one or two, one or two side bots in there to be able to kind of push them around. And so you got a motorcyclist, you got a climbing plus dude, whatever. Oh, maybe I'd put in a Sarko somewhere, but uh, maybe take out the Raven Eye for a Sarko because the Raven Eye is kind of like that separate thing that's not it's more mm -hmm. of a mercenary unit. So yeah, so I would I would take out the and put in the Sarko. So because then you can have a mine layer infiltrator mimetism guy. You're kind of covering all the bases of like what does this faction do and what do they have access to? Yeah, so like immediately you're kind of like, okay, you get all these kind of options. And so then when you run into them, you kind of already read the rules on them, kind of thing. Right. Interesting. 
I like that. I think that that's interesting. A, a take on sectorials as like, what are the greatest hits in these sectorials? I feel like, did you have a fide in your zone? No, oh, there's no they're not in, in that faction. KK. There's a few days in KK. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, like it's what is the greatest hits of this faction kind of as a theme. Like that'd be cool. I mean, there's lots of ways of cutting a starter set. They've kind of got their format that they're really comfortable with, but I think it'd be cool to see more different plays on it too. It'd be a fun thing to revamp. What's nice is that I can make a um, a Harris and a duo, and then I have my infiltrating guy and my parachutist guy. Mm-hmm. So you could basically cover like the various different fire teams, even just in that little seven more order. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That well, fun. that's it for our AMA. Thanks so much, guys, for all the questions you asked. And go fire off new ones. Uh, we'll see if ITS if ITS 15 is dropped by the time we record the next one. Obviously, we're going to cover ITS 15. Um, but the mailbag madness will continue until otherwise. <laughs> so we've got three in here right now. So go fill this sucker up. Um, and then our last little bit of news this week, which we ended last one on, like, spicy takes. So I thought it'd be fun to do spicy takes at the end of this one too. Uh, it's to talk about how much steel phalanx was at Interplanetario. <laughs> uh, I wanted to hear you guys' opinions on that. Uh, obviously, our group chat we talked about it a little bit and what that meant. And I'm curious as to why you guys think that happened. Why was there eight out of the top twenty playing a single faction? Didn't they get cleaned out though? A little bit, yeah. And they didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's quite like, the one. I mean. What were the missions? Yeah, I don't remember what they were Let's off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. Because on like, another note, ITS fifteen better be out soon because the first uh um, no, no, they always use fourteen. They always use the previous seasons at Nova Open. They don't No, no, them. I get that. I was gonna say it better be soon because the first um satellite, satellite tournament is in one week. Yeah. <laughs> it's September third. Or sorry, it's August thirty first. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's coming up real quick. That's uh, that's five days from now. They just uh, use the previous year's pack usually, if they yeah, get it. But like, you're gonna get your qualifier for the ITS 15 playing ITS 14 scenarios. That's a little, know, man. That's yeah, a little lame. I agree. Uh, let's have a look here. So 2023. I'm just grabbing oh, the. Right. I'm going to the English website because it's currently set to the Spanish website. So let's like see. instinctually, I think. Probably Steel Phalanx was a good choice for like maybe some of the beginning scenarios. Because why we saw so many Steel Phalanx? Steel Phalanx is just solid. They have so much mechanical power. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they don't they they have problems, but like a lot of the problems that you run into with Steel Phalanx are like I don't know how to play my faction well and I can't play against certain enemies because I lean on things like smoke or my mimetism. But like when you when you get to what I assume is the tier of people playing at Interplanetario, they kind of know what they're doing and like they have the the rounded steel phalanx army that isn't just like oops all myrmidons like you're like oh myrmidons are really good and they can just win games and then you start playing against people who are like oh yeah chain rifle sniper msv like all of the different tools that really mess them up but the problem is like they do run into the problem of my guys are all crazy expensive i don't know let's say my like gut reaction well just reading through um the tournaments there's 180 players 60 are guests uh and they form these events there's three its regional winners the interplanetary winner from the previous year from 2019 last time they held it uh 18 its satellite winners three uh regional winners and 30 uh, 35 other satellite winners and there's 120 regular signed up players so 60 of the 180 players playing in the tournament are basically like qualifiers and the other 120 are regular folks um the tournament itself has a very big uh like set of additional rules so there's the kraken masters and the pulpy prodigies in both tournaments players will face each other for six rounds each one's a swiss system tournament totally independent of one another trying to avoid repeating opponents between the best and fitting players from all around the world at the end of these six rounds the two players with the best accumulated punctuation will play on the sunday's final game 
Uh, both tournaments consist of 90 participants, 30 guest players, and 60 regular assigned players. So basically there's two like classes of people, and then they take the best from those two to go fight each other uh, based on like their total points because you can't have you can't go to undefeated. You'd have to play forever, basically, with 180 players. Um, the actual, like, tournament rules are kind of crazy. So you get an hour and 50 minutes per round, and all of the sections of the round are actually, like, timed. Each player gets 10 minutes to deploy. Their first turn, they get 20 minutes. Their second turn, they get 15 minutes. The third turn, they get 10 minutes. Each uh, player is responsible for the compliance of their times, and they should not either of them exceed 55 minutes of play. Uh, the last 10 minutes of each game will be de designated to organize the results and create new pairings. Um, and there's a big screen counting it all down. So when I see Steel Phalanx there a whole bunch of times, and there's people coming from all over the world that don't all speak the same language, having to play games against each other, what I would want to bring to play those missions, and I can pull the missions in a minute, but I would want to play an army that's fast to play, that I don't have to think about a whole lot, that can do those jobs. And Steel Phalanx ticks all those buttons. Killing doesn't require a ton of like special rules. You just go kill. And Steel Flanks does go kill real well. <laughs> and they drag around all, all of the button pressers with them. Exactly. Exactly. So you just you go do the speed jobs. bump as you're killing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like centimeters is the official measurement for this tournament. So, like, there's that. Like, there's all kinds of things that are going to slow down, at, like international players, for instance. Um, yeah, hmm. so like, there's a lot of like additional rules here in Interplanetario that you kind of have to think about, I guess. That I think I would... mean, a big part of that is just playing on a clock. Yeah, playing on a clock. So Friday was supplies and front lines. Saturday is capture and protect and countermeasures. Capture um, and protect and decapitation. Oh my god! And then the final mission, mission six, is biotech four. But if you're playing the final, if you're the top two players, you're playing frostbite. <laughs> Okay. Frostbite, like the random one, right? That's Frostbite? No, no, Frostbite. No, no, no. Frostbite is the um the, the new one, the one that was just for this season. The one with the four quarters and you have the mass. It's like an Outbraster Breacher or something like that, though. You're yeah, but then quarters. the the HVT that appears is random. There's yeah, there's two side. HVTs. Yeah, it's, it's one of the other sides, yeah. You're, you're, trying, you're trying to unlock the HVT. Yeah. And then dominate zones. So it's basically a button push, but you're just you're still just trying to dominate all four zones. Right, but there's a 50-50 about where the HVTs are in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the idea is that you you unlock them anyway, and then it's just scoring points for pushing the buttons anyway, and it locks your opponent out. And right. Steel Flanks has lots of, like, high point models that are great for that mission, too. So, like... Yeah, it makes sense. Supplies, I mean, that's the end mission. But... Supplies is great for, for Steel Flanks, because they just go grab them and, yeah, come try and kill me. Frontline's great for them. Lots of high point models that can kill and then push into the opponents on the end of the game. Capture yeah, protect, missions same thing. Just kill capture, you. Yeah, capture capture protect measures, is kill you. The countermeasures cap. is much harder because you end up with the like rolling um, classifieds, mm -hmm. and they can run no, into that's, a wall. That's, that's highly classified. No, no, highly classified is set classifieds. Oh, countermeasures right, right, right. is the rolling one, the rolling which is way right. harder. Yeah. Um, and I can see it being way harder for them because they have like. They have a lot of generic specialists and they have a lot of like hacker mm. or doctor. Yeah, they got hackers, doctors. And if you take Sila, you can do a lot of it. They don't have a lot of engineers, but they do have a lot of guys with D chargers that aren't engineers. So you can tend to do a lot of those. And everybody with a name counts as a veteran, right? So you can do all the veteran mission. Like, That's actually huge. Things. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Named characters are littering that yeah. faction. And then Biotech Vor or Frostbite. I mean, Biotech yeah, but by that lights. point. So you can just by... run forward and win. And then yeah. frostbite is frostbite. Apparently, everyone lost at that point, though. Plain steel failing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. But yeah. So that's it. Like, I, I honestly think it was. It, I don't think it has anything to do with steel flanks being OP. I think it has more to do. If you go and read this mission pack, it's like you were on a clock. You were playing like a very direct action almost on the missions, with the exception of countermeasures. There, like decap, capture, protect, front lines, and supplies are all just like hit you in the face missions. And if you get to the end, Biotech 4 and Frostbite are both missions that generate, like, generally speaking, you want to have fire teams because they give you order efficiency to go grab zones and put extra bodies in zones. And Biotech 4 in particular, if you don't make it to the final final, like, you, you just, fire teams are just a huge advantage in Biotech 4 versus, versus other other factions. Or, uh, and and clearly they weren't factions. overpowered because they didn't win in the they end. They didn't win. And nope. also, 
there well there's i think there's one that's still in the top 10 at the end of it it's like a pretty even spread like you don't end up in the yeah. situation that 40k did where like five of them were necron yeah, yeah. right like you have yeah. you have there was 18 fun. factions and five of them of the yeah. winners are one the of same these one. things is all like the other <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that would be my take on it i thought it was a good looking spread i thought it was cool i thought it was cool because they're new too like there's a little bit of that like they're the new faction um and, yeah and and like honestly i liked that miss mission pick if you're gonna try and play six games over a weekend like do missions that aren't hard on the brain you're trying to run a 180 person tournament like yeah do that yeah they are pretty straightforward scoring with right? countermeasures i think being the most complicated mm -hmm. yeah but even you that one a, is if like you threw a you quadrant just... control in there it'd be real simple <laughs> Even that one is just like pick up the card and it's yours now. Yeah, for sure. Like I did it, my card, my card. Oh, there's empty card slots. Do you want to put a card down? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm into it. Dan, so congratulations. Dan, do you know the difference between countermeasures and highly classified, Dan? I do now, Dan. River. Yeah, yeah. They they screwed up at the hotter than hills. <laughs> Oh, his really? opponent, they played countermeasures and everyone else played highly classified for real. <laughs> no. Didn't even play countermeasures properly. I like you guys just played a completely different mission for the rest of the <laughs> It game. was a completely made up mission, basically. Oh, yeah, and God. they played you it. You guys wrong. just didn't even bother reading the reading the rules at all. We were talking about it on the drive back, and oh, he was like, Yeah, and like he drew like the wrong one. I'm like, Drew, what what the fuck are you talking about? Because one of the times we realized you're having a conversation, and both of you were not talking about the same thing at all. Yeah. <laughs> I totally had countermeasures when I saw her like, highly classified in my head. It was countermeasures, yeah. and he's like, "But we each put in two. I was like, "There's four? I thought there was only three. I was like, oh, "I played no, this wrong the last time I played table. this." Two of you just the blindly, and then he had no idea either, and it was just, it was bad. And then we were like halfway through the game, and I'm like, "Wait, there's nowhere here where it says where you draw them." But I'm also trying to like pay attention to the game, so I was like, "Well, ah, whatever. We're both yeah. playing the same mission at least. Just it's a weird ass fucking mission." <laughs> no idea what's happening perfect yeah. well there it is we did another one did episode 37 guys cannot believe we're almost into a new its season i'm very excited to 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 start something new and start a new army and play new games i have to but read that gonna... document again i just want to know what are they going to keep and what are they going to add like is are it. the takamoto's going to stay or are they going to go away or are they going to stay in some variant version? And then what is the thing that they're seeing? Because like, like they have a bunch of data on what models are being used and what are not being used. And they can skew that by skill type. And they can look at like, hey, drop troopers aren't coming out all that much. What if, insert whatever. God, give me a drop like, trooper season. That'd be great. Right? It's awful. So cool. I mean... Welcome to the welcome to infinity. If you play the scenarios this season, I can put this guy behind you because you lined up like you were playing 40k and you're dead now. Everyone died. <laughs> Lesson Perfect. learned. Yep. All right, I'm going to bed. Okay. It's late. Good night, everybody. Good night.